In this video, let's go over the uh, in-text questions for uh, uh, laws of motion chapter. And just to save time, I have actually gone go, gone ahead and uh, uh, solved these questions. So, but but we'll go through the response in detail, one after the other. Uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, which of the following has more inertia? Uh, rubber band or the stone of the same size? The bicycle and a train? A uh, five rupee coin and a one rupee coin? Uh, so we learned that you know inertia is uh, related to the mass of the object. So higher the mass, uh, higher the inertia. Uh, so applying that, uh, we know that you know uh, in the first example, it is a stone uh, that, that's likely going to be of uh, higher mass. And in the second case, you know between a bicycle and a train, obviously it will be a train. And between a five rupee coin and a one rupee coin, it's likely going to be a five rupee coin. So, so higher the mass, higher the inertia. In the following example, try to identify the number of times the velocity of the ball changes. A football player kicks a football to another player of his team who kicks the football towards the goal. The goalkeeper of the opposite team collects the football and kicks it towards the player of the own team. Um, so in this case, if you see the you know, football player uh, kicks a football uh, to another player. So this is the first time that the ball, ball's velocity is uh, changed. Probably the ball was at rest and, and the first football player kicks it to another player. So that's the first time. And uh, yeah, so uh, just to complete the question, the question also involves, you know, identifying the agent supplying the force. So in the first instance, it is the first football player uh, who is the agent who changes the velocity of the ball. So he's the one who is supplying that uh, force. Um, so once it goes to the another player of his team, who again kicks the football towards the goal. So the, there is a second time when the velocity of the ball changes, when the second player hits, and here again the second player is the one who is uh, uh, who's the agent of that supplying force. Uh, then the goalkeeper of the opposite team collects the football. So here the goalkeeper possibly you know, brings the ball to rest. Right, so that is also a change in velocity. Right, bringing something to rest is also a change in velocity. So that for the third time, the ball changes its velocity, and that there the agent is the goalkeeper uh, who's who's bringing that ball to rest, probably giving that opposing force. And then he kicks it towards the player of his own team. So the goalkeeper, after collecting the ball, after bringing it to a rest, then uh, the goalkeeper hits the ball. Uh, to another player of a team, so that's the fourth time that the velocity has changed. And here again, the uh, the agent is the goalkeeper. Explain why some of the leaves may get detached from a tree if you vigorously shake its branch. So uh, let's let, let's understand what uh, uh, what happens. So so the, there is a branch and there are a bunch of uh, uh, leaves there. So when 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 you when, when you suddenly move, uh, so let's, let's consider this to be a branch. And you know, uh, and, and there are leaves uh, protruding from that branch. And uh, this branch is uh, the branch is at rest, and the leaves are also at rest, right? Now, if you suddenly move, uh, if you suddenly move the branch, uh, which means that the leaves uh, that are attached, right, uh, that are protruding from it, uh, they have been at rest. So, based on Newton's first law, they will try, they'll continue to be on rest, right? But if you suddenly move it, which means that uh, 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 the the inertia will be disrupted uh, for the leaves as well, and uh, in that brief moment, since it is sudden, uh, the top the, the leaves uh, uh, right at least at least the top portion of the leaves which are away from the actual branch will tend to be at rest, and uh, they might actually get detached, uh, right? Uh, if if there is a sudden uh, uh, sudden movement to the branch. So if you continue to uh, move that, the chances are that you know uh, you are continuously moving from the, the, the branch is continuously going to be from you know rest to motion, rest to motion very fast. So by the time it tries to, you know, the top portion of the leaf tries to ad, uh, adjust uh, to that, you know, uh, by, uh, by that time it might even get deta uh, the, the, the leaf might actually get detached from the, uh, uh, from the branch as well. Uh, why do you fall in the why do you why do you fall in the forward direction when a bus breaks uh, to a stop and and fall backwards when it accelerates from the uh, rest? So here again, this is also very similar to uh, the earlier scenario. So let let's take a scenario of a bus which is which is at rest. So when the bus is at rest, you are standing on that bus and you are also at rest. 
So for Newton's first law, an object that continues to be on uh, the, the, an object that, uh, that that is at rest will continue to be at rest. Now, when the bus suddenly accelerates, right? When the bus suddenly accelerates, uh, your body uh, that has been on rest, especially the top portion of the body uh, that that has been on rest, will also try to will continue to be on rest, right? Now, when the when the when the bus starts suddenly. Uh, you're you're uh, you you're, you're 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 standing on that bus, so you will tend to you know your your bottom part of the bo bottom part of the body is 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 on is, is closer to the floor, uh, right? And 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 which means that you know it will tend to move immediately with the bus because there is a friction between your feet and the uh, bus. So they 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 uh, uh, you know uh, because of that friction, they, your your legs will immediately start to move along with the bus. However, your top portion of the body will tend to be at rest because it has been at rest until then, right? So it will take some time to get onto motion. So uh, if the, if the acceleration is too fast, your 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 top portion of the body will tend to stay in rest while your legs will move forward. So your uh, you will tend to fall backwards. Right? At the same time, same as the case when when the bus is in motion and you are also in motion. Uh, you're all, both you and your bu and the bus is in motion, so you're all in uh, you're all moving moving towards one direction. When the bus suddenly applies the brake, which means that your bottom part of the body, which is you know closer uh, to the floor, there is friction between your feet and the floor, so that will tend to you know come to rest along with the bus. However, your top portion of the body will try to stay in motion, which means that it will move forward. Your heads will move forward. While your legs will try to stick uh, along with the bus uh, with the help of friction, so you will tend to fall forward when when the bus suddenly comes to a halt. Right. So Newton's uh, uh, first law. Uh, if action is always equal to the reaction, explain how a horse can pull a cart. Uh, here again, just just like how the sprinter or the uh, just like how the sprinter you know takes off. From with the help of a starter block, right? He or she applies force on that starter block, and then he leaps forward, just like how the uh, swimmer uh, leaps forward by applying pressure on the uh, launch pad, right? The horse also applies uh, that force. Uh, sorry, it's not pressure; it's okay. It's, it's force. Um, so uh, the horse also applies that force on the uh, uh, applies the force uh, on the floor, and that is how the horse also, you know, leaps. Uh, Forward, or you know, it takes that step to uh, pull a cart. So it's Newton's uh, third law of motion. Explain why is it difficult for a fireman to hold a hose which ejects large amount of water at a high velocity? So let's see this. So what happens when you know uh, when 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 large uh, large amounts of water at high velocity is pumped through the fire hose? So let, let's consider this to be the opening of that hose, right? So from which you know water comes out. And and to to get uh, no no to to get rid of the fire that is out here right. So when water comes out in some in in a very high speed out of the hose, what happens is uh, this is the source right for the water and 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 the force is really high. So if you consider this to be the action, now the water will tend to you know uh, apply a force on in the opposite direction back on the hose. Uh, uh, with, with the same speed, so which means that the hose will tend to move uh, backwards. So here is where the uh, this is this is based on Newton's uh, third law uh, that you know the the high the high velocity water will try to apply that you know same force back on the hose, and uh, the hose will tend to move backwards. So which means that the the fireman will find it hard to keep uh, keep the hose at rest and and direct the water. So that's the difficulty that the fireman will have. From a rifle of mass of 4 kgs, uh, a bullet of mass 500 gram is fired with an initial velocity of 35 meters per second. Uh, calculate the initial recoil velocity of the rifle. So we have a rifle that is with a loader which is loaded with a bullet, and uh, and and we have fired right. The once it is fired, uh, we see that the bullet has uh, started to move with a velocity of 35 meters per second, and uh, and and what what. Uh, uh, the recoil velocity, which is which is the reaction, right? If if this, if, if uh, firing the bullet is the action, uh, then the bullet, the, the way the bullet would have acted on the gun is the reaction, right? So that would result in the recoil uh, velocity. So just before, uh, just before the bullet was fired, we know that you know the 
the gun and the bullet both of them were at rest right so if you consider the mass of the if a to be if you consider the gun to be object a which means mass is 4 kg and the uh, and the mass of the bullet to be uh, 50 grams or 0.05 kg just before it's getting it's being fired we know that the initial velocity is zero on both the case the gun didn't move and the bullet also didn't move right and uh, once it is fired we knew that the bullet was fired with the velocity of 35 meters per second but the recoil velocity of the uh, rifle we don't know right that's what we need to find so how do we find that we know that you know the based on the law of conservation of momentum we know that the sum of the initial momentum is equal to the sum of the final momentum right in an isolated system so in this isolated system we just have the gun and the uh, bullet we knew that the sum of the initial momentum is zero why because the initial velocity of both the objects was zero so m m a v u a is zero and m b u v is equal to zero so which means that the sum of the final momentum should also be equal to zero and we know the sum of the final momentum to be you know 4 va 4 is the mass of the rifle uh, times the 0.05 times the 35 0.05 is the mass of the rifle so if you if you solve for this one we know that you know va comes down to be you know minus uh, 0.44 meters per second so the recoil velocity is acts in the opposite direction of the um, uh of of the of of the direction of the bullet right so the travel uh, the direction in which the bullet travels so that's why you get the uh, minus here the last question is uh, two objects of mass 100 grams and 200 grams are moving along the same line and uh, direction uh, with velocities of 2 meters per second and 1 meters per second respectively they collide and after the collision the first object moves at a velocity of 1.65 meters per second determine the velocity of the second object so let's consider uh, the first object to be a and the second object to be b we knew that you know the first object is 0.1 kg the second object is of mass uh, 0.2 kg the initial velocity is 2 meter per second for object a and the initial velocity is 1 meter per second for object b now the final velocity of the first object is 1.67 we need to find the final velocity of uh, uh, vb so we knew that you know uh, based on newton's third law and the law of conservation of momentum that you know the sum of the initial momentum should be equal to the sum of the final momentum right so uh, we we knew that uh, uh, or in other words you know uh, we actually derived that based on the force applied uh, uh, by when they collided when object a and b collided the force applied by a on b uh should be equal to the negative of the force applied by b on a right so what you see on the left hand side is the force applied by the first object on the second object which is mass times the change in um, uh, change in velocity over time so time can get cancelled because the during collision the time spent by both you know both the forces uh, uh, the, the 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 time involved in both the forces are the same right so so this is actually the force of uh, force exerted by object uh, a on b and this is actually the force exerted by object b on a and since this is reaction or this is action you have the negative sign here now when you solve for this equation you will find out that you know vb turns out to be 0.116 meters per second one final thing before you leave Uh, if you wish to revise the concepts that you've just learned please look up and try out the free revise app bot on uh, telegram app telegram is available for free on both iphone and uh, android also if you did like the content that you just watched uh, please do like share and subscribe this uh, with your friends thank you